This is Tina from Simple Tech Media. Are you looking for a way to make your classroom more engaging? Well, let me make it simple for you. Today's tutorial will be on Lumio. This is a site that has been developed by Smart. So Smart Technology is built into the software and it works very well if you have a smart board in your class. Now you do not have to have a smart board in order to use this software, but it does work very well with a smart board. One of the things I do like about Lumio is that it does work with different types of devices. I can use this on my Mac. I can use this on my Windows computer, my PC. There's an app that can be downloaded for different types of devices for Lumio, and I greatly appreciate that. I also appreciate that Lumio works with interactive boards, regardless of if they are the smart brand boards or their other branded boards. Another thing I appreciate with Lumio is that you can create a free account without having to pay for it before you invest any money. And I love that feature for any type of software. I want to test it out before I commit to paying for it. So today I'm going to sign up for a free account so I can walk through that process in case you would like to know how to do that. So I'm going to go to sign in for free or sign up for free. That did work and I am an adult, so I'm going to go ahead and tell them that. And now I have set up my account. It's taking me straight into this video that kind of gives me an overview of what this is used for. I have watched this already in the past, and so I'm not going to take the time to watch it right now. They do give me a tutorial at the beginning. If I want to go through that, it'll start a tutorial for me. If you start a tutorial and you decide that you don't actually want to go through it, you can always X out of that. So here they have a lesson that has been built that will walk me through the process of this. So I'll go ahead and use theirs just to show you some of the controls. With Lumio, you can build an interactive lesson. And if you're used to using something like Keynote or PowerPoint, it's kind of that same idea. Over on the left side, we have this toolbar and it has some buttons for us. Down at the bottom is how you get from one slide to the next. So right now it's giving me a heads up. Hey, if you want to move forward, you can go ahead and, and click on this. And if you have an interactive board as a teacher, you would go through and you would tap this with your finger or do whatever. You can have a student do that for you if you wanted to. You can click it with your mouse from your computer. And if you're projecting to that screen, it would work that way as well. So I'm going to go ahead and tap. And then here it gives us just an overview of what they're going to do. So I can go ahead and tap to the next one. And then I could continue on. And then they'll go through and give me an idea of what's going on here. I don't really want to go through all of theirs today, but they do have some built in tutorials and I appreciate that. There's a video so you can insert YouTube videos if you want to. And then you can connect as a student. You can test it out as the teacher for the student, but students can connect to this as well. And then they have different activities set up in here. And then we got to the end of the lesson. So they're telling me to go back to the menu and the menu usually has those three lines on it. If I see that button, that tells me that I can click on it for more details. I'm going to go ahead and end the lesson. And this is taking me back to my main page. While I'm in here, the tutorial is still on. So right now it's telling me that I can manage my class access and I can go ahead and let them know that I want to do this later, or that I understand. Here's my name over here. Here's my library. So that's what I'm actively on right now. There are some practice files that have already been listed there for me. This is my class ID and if I click on this, It'll pull up a QR code that could be followed for my students to be able to link in. If I wanted to provide guest access on today, I could turn that on or I could turn that off if I wanted to. 
and I can reset my class ID if I need to. Maybe somebody got a hold of my ID and I don't want them to have that ID. I can go ahead and change it whenever I'm ready to continue on with my, my course. I can print this. I can copy it. I can do whatever with it. I can edit my class. So I can rename my class if I want to. I can manage who has access to my class. I can edit the class banner. Let's see what this is. So I can add a picture here if I wanted to. I don't know that I have any pictures right now on my device. I had to delete a lot of things to make some room for some files. So I don't think I have anything extra right now, but you can customize this to look however you want it to look. Now let's talk about creating a lesson. You can create a new lesson yourself from scratch. You can import a lesson that maybe has been shared with you or maybe one that you have saved to your device that you want to import. You also have these shared libraries and then you have this Lumio library. So if I click on shared libraries, you can collaborate with your coworkers. So let's say that you work at a school and at the school you have, maybe you teach first or second grade and you have maybe three different first grade teachers and that's the grade that you do. You can work together to build lessons and then you can share them with each other so that you're each using your time effectively. You can kind of pull your resources together and then share those with each other. And they would show up here if you have things that have been shared. I don't have any right now, so I don't have any showing up. But then there are some that are pre-built that you have access to. And there are a ton of resources in here that you can use. So if I click on Lumio Library, I can come over here and search for resources. And if I click on the little magnifying glass, you'll see that there are a ton of filters that I can turn on. Right now there are 10,219 results that pulled up that are part of the Lumio Library. There are blank handwriting templates that are there. There are activities that have been built. There are games that have been built. This one's a timer over here. We can dress the bear. There's math things. So if I have a certain grade that I'm looking for, so a while ago I said first grade. So if I go ahead and click on grade one and I'm looking for a specific topic, I can look over here for subject. And maybe I'm wanting to do a music lesson. So I could go ahead and do that and see, see what shows up over here. So a lot of different options that will pull up. And some of these lessons might be practical for you, might be something that you want to use. Some of them might not be anything that you're interested in, and that's fine, but they're there in case you would like to use them. So you can go ahead and use that as an idea. And a lot of times I won't use other people's things, but sometimes just looking through and seeing what other people did gives me the idea of what I can go in and actually do myself. When I'm working with a new software for the first time and I can go look at examples, that is helpful so that I know what types of activities or resources or features that are available that I just need to go looking for. You can come in and choose a certain standard that you follow for your state, for whatever your curriculum program is. So I'm in the state of Florida. So if I was a teacher in Florida teaching first grade, I could come in here and see, just see what's there. There's not nothing guaranteed but there might be some things that have been based off of the standard for what we're looking for. All different options for the locations of where you are, all kinds of features over there. When you find a lesson that you would like to use, you can click on that lesson and it will show up in your library. So let me see, as I come across here, I see a reading writing and this one looks interesting. So it's a game for nouns and verbs. This was shared by the Lumio team. And if I click on that lesson, it takes me into the lesson. And this lets me have a preview of how this has been set up. So this is the first slide, the second slide, so on and so forth. There are some activities that can be used. And if I'm looking at this and I say, you know what? I actually like this. I want to see more. I can go ahead and choose to save to my library. Now, if I go to my library up here across the top, I see now that the activity has been saved to my library. And if I want to go ahead and edit this, I could. So if I click on edit, it takes me into the actual activity. 
and I can make adjustments to it. I can edit the page using some of the resources here. It's still giving me the tutorial. Whenever you're finished editing and making changes to whatever you wanted to, you could click on finish editing. If you want to go ahead and just use the lesson though, without making any changes to it, you could click start. Whenever you're ready to do a lesson with your students, and this is again, the one that we got from Lumio, it's giving me the tutorial of how to go through this. What I appreciate about these sites like Lumio and Nearpod, Nearpod does this as well. You can work through the activity with your students either in live time where you work through it together as a class, or you can set this up to where you have your students work through it on their own time and they work through it individually. And then you as the teacher can follow their progress and keep track of if they are able to work through the lesson the way that you thought that they would. Now, this is what it would look like if I had it up on the screen. So let's say that I had a smart board in my classroom or an interactive board in my classroom. This is what we would all be seeing as far as the display in the classroom. You can also though have students join in on their own devices if you happen to have devices for them to join in on. And to give them the code to log in, you would come over here to the top left side. And if you click on the part that has the two little people, you'll see that at the top of this, there is a button that you can click on to expand out to give the code. So if you're in this part and you want to let your students connect, you can have that QR code show up. You also could copy the link and send it to them. And to me, I see this working really well if I'm wanting to connect with a group of students who are not in class with me. But this works great even if they are right there in class and they're able to learn how to use their devices in an appropriate way. You're there to help them. They can all be participating at the same time. Maybe you have some coming up to the board and participating in these activities and the others are working on their devices while that's going on so that everybody's able to be engaged and be involved in what's happening. And maybe they don't all have devices and you just have the one so you can have them come up and participate in that activity that way as well. A lot of different ways that you can use these sites. Today was just a quick tutorial on getting started with Lumio and looking for a pre-built lesson. Keep watching because soon I will upload a video where we actually build a lesson ourselves. Nikki and I appreciate the support that we've had as we've been making our videos. We hope that they've been helpful for you and have been giving you ideas of ways that you can increase your technology skills in your own lives. Please reach out if you have any suggestions for tutorials. We are working through a list, a long list of things that we have ideas for, and we want to make sure that we're being practical for you. If you didn't know, we do have a podcast that drops every Thursday. It's available anywhere you would find a podcast, and you can watch a video form of it on YouTube. Please follow us on all of our socials, and be sure to like and subscribe. Mm -hmm.